What's up guys, Ryan Maniac V2 <coughs> and today I have another video for you today and I'm going to be showing you, uh, this is a tutorial showing you how to make this lighting setup all on your own from scratch, no plugins or add-ons needed in Cinema 4D. Um, this can be done in R12 or R11, just follow the steps as necessary and uh, if you're wondering about my giveaway video, it's going to be uh, pick the winners at 250 subscribers or 300 subscribers. Thanks for all the comments and support and go check that video out if you have not, it'll be in the description. So uh, yeah, um, anyways so check out that video in the description, but this video is a tutorial about how to create a lighting system, um, an office lighting system within Cinema 4D without any plugins. Um, all you need is Cinema 4D, R11 or R12, I'm sure they'll both work fine. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the Cinema 4D here and go into your render settings. Um, go to your output, and as a standard on all your videos, you want to change your width to 1280, your height to 720, because that is the standard for HD video on YouTube as of right now. You can change it to higher resolution if you want to, but for right now, um, the standard on video is usually 1280 by 720. So yeah, and um, anyways, you want to go ahead and drop a plane in here, and now um, just make it big. Like, oops, go to the resize tool and uh, make it big. Just click in the middle and drag to the right. Left is down, or left is small, right is bigger, and uh, just make it like that big, um, not too big. And uh, then go to the plane, hit Control C or Command C, just copy, paste, and um, paste again, and paste again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go look at the uh, plane from straight on, like so. Uh, maybe that's not straight. That looks pretty straight for now. But anyways, with plane one, we're going to go ahead and make the. Um, oops! Don't don't do anything with that yet. But click on plane one and go to this tool right here, the uh, rotation tool. Click on the blue line, hold shift, and rotate to a negative 90 degree angle. And uh, then what you're going to do is push it to the side, like that. Make sure it's right on the edge. And then drag it up. Or you can just, you can just leave it there. That's fine. Just leave it there. And then, um, anyways, um, then for plane two, you're going to do the same thing, but instead you're going to do. Um, doesn't really matter, but you're going to do positive 90 degrees. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter at all. And then you're going to go all the way to the right. And here we go. What we're doing right now is we're making the studio. Um, and what the studio is, is going to make a nice little lighting system for us. So anyways, now go to plane 3 and do hold the uh, red line and hold shift. And then you're going to want to drag to a um, negative 90 degrees on that axis. Or a positive 90, either one. Just 90 degrees. And then you want to go to the side, or I mean, you want to go to click this right, click that right here, and uh, go to top view. Um, it doesn't really help that much, but anyways, um, so just click back on this, and then um, we're just going to go like that and see where our plane is lined up. Um, anyways, that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is go back to our normal view and just center, you know, our attention here, our camera on the box. So we're going to zoom out a little bit. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Just click that. And then what we're going to do now is just, you know, get our room centered here. It's kind of hard to do, but anyways, let's go like that. And now what we're going to do is grab another plane right here. And also, if you want to make the walls higher, you can just highlight all these, plane 1 through plane 3, and use the move tool and just drag them up a little bit. And that makes the walls higher, but I don't really recommend that. This is fine anyways. And um, anyways, for plane um, 4, you're going to um, re you're gonna drag it up here and you just want to resize it um, down to about that size. That looks pretty good. And then uh, drag the blue side in like that so that when we see it, it's uh, you know, we don't want it to be too uh, squarish because we're making office lights. Remember that. Um, so just drag that. Just make it smaller, and then drag the right side out like that. That looks like a pretty good office light. So now we're gonna go ahead and drag this back to a flat angle. Um, anyways, so let's see this angle coordination. Rotation zero. We're gonna go ahead and go back. Make sure that's zero. So anyways. Now, once you have your plane um, sized right, 
you're going to drag it up to the top here, just like that. And um, we are going to go ahead and put a um, MoGraph cloner on it. Now drag your plane 4 into the cloner and go to your cloner and object. You're going to go to grid array and you're going to change the count to oops gonna drag first of all drag your cloner up here and so what we want to do is make sure that the sub levels are uh, just one one that way so now now what you're gonna do is you're going to um, change the um, count up to about five and five and it's gonna want to drag that out like that and then drag that out like that and right now we are creating our lights. Um, so I mean, about 900, 850, 900, and five and five and one in the middle. Um, this creates our light grid or our office lighting. And drag that up to the top of your studio, which we have created in the past. Um, so yeah. Anyways, now for the materials, uh, we're gonna make a material for the studio itself. And also, this is a very basic studio. I know it doesn't doesn't look too fancy, but it will work for your lighting needs. Anyways, go to new material. We'll make the walls material. All we're gonna do is make the color kind of like that, and just give off the tiniest bit of reflection. So we're gonna go to about a, a five percent reflection, and we're gonna put the blur up to five, um, maybe ten. Yeah, ten. Blur up to ten, five percent. Actually, we're gonna go down to a two percent reflection. So yeah, two percent with a ten percent blur, and we're gonna drag that on to each and every plane except for the lights. Um, the lights will be def uh, definitely will be different. Now, new material again, and uh, this material is the most important um, part. What you're going to do is go to nothing except for color, specular, and also luminance. Click luminance and go to about 200%. And what you're going to do is drag that onto your cloner, and we're good. Now, the second most important, actually, maybe this is tied for the most important part of the video, but important, impo important part. So you're going to go to your render settings in here and go to effect, global illumination, and that just makes your lighting a whole lot better. So now you're going to go to MoGraph, Mo Text, and just an example, I'm going to drag my text in here, and um, we're going to go, um, just, I'm just going to leave it at text. I'm going to put the subdivision to about 60, and put the caps. Fill it cap, fill it cap, and um, I'm going to show you how to make a nice little, just a quick material for your text. Go into here and go into reflection. So go into your material too. Go into your um, reflections. Hit Fresnel. This is a very easy texture. Go to about uh, twenty percent on each of these. Twenty percent on brightness. Twenty-one percent doesn't matter. Mix strength about twenty-one percent, and uh, that looks pretty nice. And now we're just going to drag this in here, and we are going to zoom in on the text and we're gonna see how this thing looks um, I think it's gonna look pretty nice but um, yeah so now we're gonna render this out and um, as you see we're already getting a lot of render time which means um, we are at a um, we are using global illumination which makes the render times long and um, yes this we're getting a bit of reflections down on the studios but we can fix that in a second by turning the reflections off and uh, such and uh, for some reason the render quit, so we're gonna re-render that real quick. Um, anyways, yeah, I actually tapped the trackpad on my laptop. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and render this out and see if there's any problems with it. Um, this is my second time doing this kind of studio on my own. I've done different studios with different lighting. And uh, hello, Tim. So let's see how this renders out. It will take a long time to render it unless you have a very powerful computer, but that's just the way it is with global illumination. Um, it's going to do that, and uh, I recommend rendering your intros overnight if you're using this lighting system. Um, I generally use this just to make text for my backgrounds or my graphics. But anyways, um, looks like it's going to come out here soon. And um, okay, so uh, we have a very nice look going on here, guys. This is a very professional studio you can create all on your own. And it uh, looks like I don't have to change anything with this studio. I actually like this better than um, the grayscale gorilla one I'm using. Um, so, yeah, guys. Um, if you need any more tutorials, um, thanks uh, 
for watching this one and uh, ask me for another one now. I will gladly make it for you. But anyways, guys, that is how to create a great reflective studio um, all on your own with no plugins. And uh, remember, turn up the reflections if you want better reflections. This is just a subtle reflection. So if you want more reflections, go to your materials and turn the reflection brightness up and also the mix strength. So there you have it, guys. That is a very nice lighting studio from Maniac. Um, so similar to the Grayscale Gorilla Office Lighting, but this one requires no money, and um, you can do it all on your own with no plugins or additional uh, add-ons. So thanks guys for watching. I know I've said that a lot today, but anyways, this has been another uh, tutorial from Ryan, Maniac V2, and uh, we'll be back next week or in a few days. Thanks.